Hello and welcome back to another Unreal Engine tutorial. Um, I implemented a really simple, I think, uh, spectator system um, for my game Champion of India, which is what you see here. Um, it's uh, my first ever game I'm making. Um, haven't released it yet, but I've got a demo out on Steam. Um, if you'd like, please check it out, try out the demo, and, and give it a wish list. It helps a lot. But when the player dies, right, I want to see what your what your teammates are doing and be able to spectate. Um, and that's what this video is going to show you how to do. So here I'm playing as a server right now. When I die, this pop-up menu, spectate left, right, and you can see it changes my view target to whatever the client's looking at, right? And then as the client moves around, um, it's going to see it. So this will work um, for both server and client um, in your online games. Um, and yeah, so it's going to show you how to do that. So Really, all you need is a HUD. Let me grab, and I'm not going to go through the, the HUD work, but basically when a player dies um, in a co-op game, it just loads. I have this widget pop up, right? You died waiting to respond, go back to lobby, yada, yada. Um, but all you need is some sort of widget that's got a button that you can click to go left and a button that you can click to go right. I call them spectate right, spectate left. Um, and then you need a player controller. And that is it. So I'm going to close the rest of this. So we'll start with the widget, um, right? Create your own widget, whatever you want. Um, basically, the way mine works, when my player dies and all three choose zero, um, the pawn then casts the player controller, and the player controller uh, displays this widget. In this widget, right, then you implement the on clicked, so both spec left, spec right, cast to your player controller. So your owning player should be your player controller, um, and then run these events, which we'll get into. So now in my player controller, what you need to do is add two custom events. So right click, add custom event, call one of them spectate um, next server and the other spectate previous server. Now this is important um, and this only works if it's run on the server. So click on your events and make sure on the right under replicates, you have this run on server and check reliable. Make sure you do that for both. I tried this, it doesn't work for the client um, if it runs on the owning client, so this must run on server, but it will work for the server. Mm -hmm. um, so once you create these events, come back into your widget, and then make sure you have connected like so. Right? So click the, the left, that is the previous server, and then you'll click back control, and then you click the right, and it does the same. And one thing too, I'm using owning player, um, I guess I will show this, I've got this function, uh, not this one, this one, which is where I create my widget. Anytime you create a widget, there is a node for owning player. So I'm running this through my player controller. So just make sure you, you plug in self for owning player. And then that's what this will be and allow you to cast um, to your PC uh, or my PC game play, which is just my player control I'm using. Anyways, okay. So uh, where were we? Event graph. So first thing you do coming off one of these spectator events is get all widget or all actors of class. So get all actors of class. And the class I'm getting is my player controller gameplay. So for me, right, my AI in the game uses its own class, an AI controller, um, and all my players will always use the uh, player controller gameplay. So this is getting all of those player controllers. Next, create a variable. Um, and I call this spectating player integer. So this is what will be used to select which player controller you're going to view. So um, I've got that right here. This should be a, mm, I have it replicated. You might not need to, but might as well. Just create a new integer uh, variable and replicate it. So the first thing you do uh, coming off your get all actors of class is get the length. So pull off this, get the length, and then subtract one. Length returns the total number of player controllers. Right, so if there's two player controllers, it'll be a length of two. But the way arrays work with um, uh, indexes is it starts at zero. So if there's two player controllers, you have a length of two, but their indexes will be the first player controller will be index zero, and the second player controller will be index one, right? So it goes zero, one, two, three, four. So I come off this length and I do minus one because what we're gonna be doing in this check is every time we press our next button, right, which in my widget is this one, we're going to be adding one to our spectator um, player integer, which is right here. And what this check is doing is, well, is this number going to be more than the total number of player controllers I can go to, right? So again, if I have two player controllers, I'll have indexes zero and one. 
So the first time I do this, I'll, you know, it'll by default be zero. Then it'll go zero to one, this will return false. And then it'll go from one to two. Well, two is greater than uh, how many I have. So that's where we run this branch. Hopefully that makes sense, right? It's just to make sure you don't add over the maximum because then there won't be a player controller for you to switch or view, view target to. So, um, yeah, so the integer plus one, check if that's greater than the length minus one. If that's true, then just set it back, back to zero. Zero will always be your first player controller in the array. If that's not true, we're not exceeding the maximum, then just set it to whatever the spectating player integer is plus one. And now we're going to take those into another check. Now these checks, these two checks aren't necessary, but what they're doing is first, right? Because we're getting all actors of class, which includes myself, right? So that's the first check is, and, and I'll walk through this a little bit more, but am I trying to view my own view target? If so, I want to exclude that. The second check is, is the player dead, right? So I don't want to view, right? Let's say you got four players in the game, two of them are dead. I don't want to view the view target of a player controller that's already dead. I, don't, I only care about the people that are, that are still alive. So those are the two checks I'm doing. These are optional. You don't need this. Um, but I'll, I'll walk through how I did it if you want to implement it. So coming off of your branch, do an or <clears throat> and then not. So which is going to say are either of these not true. Um, and it will carry forth when we get that. So the first thing is when you come off your array, you do get. So get is how you access the individual singular player controller within this array. And the um, index we're going to be getting will be our spectator player integer. And because this logic is running after this, right, we'll, we'll, we can ensure that this is set correctly, right, either to zero or our last index plus one. So we'll get that. And then I'll pull off that and do equal equal. And, and I guess maybe one thing to I'll show quick in the get. Right, get copy. This is what I used. And then off of the get, if you do equal equal, so this will be equal to a class. The other class is simply just get reference to self. Get reference to self. Right, so it's first checking. Is this return uh, player controller equal to me? If that is not true, right, so this plugs into the not, then we then this will go on the true. Next thing I'm checking is, oops, come off this. The next thing I'm checking is, is the player dead? Now this is a custom variable I have somewhere. Uh, where is this? The heck, why can't I see this dead? Yeah, okay, is player dead? So this variable, it's turned on and off by a custom event that I have set dead. So basically what I'm doing is when my pawn dies, the, the character I'm controlling, um, when, when its health reaches zero, I guess more accurately, um, it sends this event back to the player controller and sets this variable to dead. So I'm not gonna get into that in, in this video, but um, that's the logic check I'm doing. Uh, where did it go? Here we go. Right, so then I know that the player controller's pawn is dead, and so we want to exclude that. So both of these not uh, plugging into this uh, branch as or. And so then off the true, so this is the important one. Off the true, you're going to do um, set view target with blend. So this is going to be the uh, function you want to run. And off of the new view target, you're going to pull off your, your git. I'm going to get view target. And then you'll connect that into the new view target. Your target should stay itself. Uh, blend time, um, whatever this one, exponent maybe, I don't know. I leave these at zero, so this snaps it. But you could play around with um, these values, and it would be more of a uh, slower transition to the viewport instead of a snap. But I want to do snap, so I just leave them at zero. So that's off the true. Off the false, simply what I'm doing is I'm doing spectator next server and rerunning this event. So this only runs when the current index that we're setting the integer, uh, index for the array, is returning either ourselves or a dead player controller. So when that happens, I want to rerun the event to get a different player controller. So off my false, I do that. So that's for the spectate next server, which again was this button. Now for the spectate previous, 
It's very, very, very similar logic. You can just copy and paste uh, what you did up here down. The only difference is, is now our player, um, our spectating player integer, instead of plus one, will minus one, right? So now we're going backwards. And what I want to check then is, is this going to be less than zero? Because remember, the first player controller in this array will be zero. So I don't want negative one, negative two. So that's what this check is doing. So if this logic will return a value of less than zero, if that's true, then I'm just going to set the integer at the length minus one, right? So if I have three player controllers, their indexes will be zero, one, two. My length off of this array will return three because there's three player controllers, but when I minus one, that'll give us a two and that'll be my index. So hopefully that makes sense. That's how I transition from zero to two for my lowest player, um, player controller index to my highest. If this is not true, right? We get a one or a two or whatever. And then I can just set it off of this math, right? And then I'm doing the same checks of this player controller myself. Is he dead? Um, setting the view target. And then off the false, spectate previous server. So now instead of next server, I'm going to previous server to rerun this. So let me show you this in action. So I've got client, client, um, server. So this is the server. Yeah, so the Fighting this guy is dead. Now you can now spectate off of these clients. And we can see as we play as this client. Now, if this client dies, come back to the other client, and I'll, I'll show you actually this client right here. So, this is a buggy. It is returning a player control here. It's nothing. Well, um, he can watch at least the other player, the server, the switch. Hmm, so the server doesn't pick up the other one. I'll have to check into that. Uh, but now, both server and client are watching the other client, which is exactly what we need. So, yeah, pretty quick. Um, but super easy one. I'm saying so maybe one little one, but it's, it's not huge. Uh, I'll check that one. Um, but yeah, that's that's how this works. Um, you know, you could do some additional logic, but maybe you can hide this widget. Not that easy to do. I don't mind having it because I've got some capacity in there. But I'm okay. But yeah, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or if it makes sense, just let me know in the chat. Also, you got a Discord to get you join. Um, a little easier to get help there. Uh, and then again, this is my game. I'm not going to change If you could give me questions in Steam, that would mean a lot. There's a free demo on there. Watch it.